Uh-huh. Yeah. Let it bump though. It's the hard knock life. Uh-huh. Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the Progressive Era. Uh, we're going to be talking about a few points specifically from the Progressive Era, but what we really want to get into is the idea of where the Progressive Era came from. All right. Now, during the late 1800s and early 1900s, the United States has done really well in terms of industrialization, progress, um, manufacturally, things are going very well, economically, trade, things are improving. Uh, however, this is going to bring to light a lot of issues that have to do with the people working in the United States. So the idea of the progressive era is for the people to make progress socially. We have issues like conditions for the working man, uh, trusts, how people are dealing with companies that try to squash out smaller companies. So a lot of these little issues come together and eventually the government is going to have to make a decision because for a long time the economic status of America was laissez-faire, hands off. They weren't going to get into the breakdown of businesses. They were going to let them control themselves. But eventually with people making enough noise, complaining enough, bringing enough bad stories to light, the laissez-faire idea of the government, eventually they're going to have to get their hands dirty and start making some decisions and taking action so that everybody can progress during this time period. One of the big elements of the progressive era was the muckrakers. Okay? Now, before this, there was journalism, there was press, there was you know magazines and newspapers, but now we're going to be dealing with a new type of journalism. And it was called muckraking. Now the whole idea is pretty straightforward. You hear muckraking, you think of muck, which is the dirt or the mud, which is at the ground, and then just the simple idea of the raking, all right? And basically the idea is that all these issues that people didn't used to pay attention to because it was in the dirt or in the mud, they were lowly issues, now people are going to be raking it up. They're going to be bringing it to light. Okay, They're going to be scratching away the dirt and eventually they're going to expose these real issues that have to do with the everyday person. Um, Teddy Roosevelt is actually known for uh, calling it muckraking because they were so focused on the things at the ground that they didn't have time to look at the heavens. All right, That was the status quo by Teddy Roosevelt. One of the big muckrakers that we hear about is Upton Sinclair. All right? Upton Sinclair got into, okay, he was the original or uh, one of the big uh, undercover journalists. Okay? He started working at some of the meat packing plants and the food making plants, and he got a day in the life sort of idea. And his original intention was to get people to see all these working conditions that people had to deal with in meatpacking plants and to realize that they were poor conditions. It's not exactly what he brought to light. After writing everything that he did from what he saw, what really came to light was all the terrible things that happen to food when it's being made in a meatpacking plant. There's writings of rats getting mixed in with moldy old food and it's getting mixed back into the food that's going to go back out. And of course, that just disgusted so many people, top to bottom. Everybody was eating meat. Everybody was affected by this whole idea of the meatpacking industry not have, having good standards. And what's going to come from this is the Food and Drug Administration and the Pure Food and Drug Act. Okay? This is going to bring to light all the poor conditions for food going out to people and eventually the government's going to insist that standards be raised so that people's food, people's medicine, everything that gets sent out that people are going to take in has to meet a certain level of standard or else it can't be made. Um, another one of the big muckrakers is going to be Frank Norris. Frank Norris actually wrote a book called The Octopus. All right, now this idea, this animal that has its arms all over the place, reaching and touching different things, this was dealing with the Pacific Railroad Company, Standard Oil, 
all right, and we're dealing with a lot of different issues coming to light about big businesses and how they can squash smaller businesses and they can even have monopolies or trusts regulating other businesses. Now what eventually is going to come to play is Teddy Roosevelt, square deal, antitrust. We're going to have a lot of different government policies come out through this issue. Um, he's going to get out his baseball bat, you know, that big picture where he's swinging his club, and he's going to take down these big businesses. Antitrust laws, antitrust acts, uh, Sherman Act, okay? We're dealing with a lot of these big name acts. The major issue here was controlling the power of big business, all right? And what we want to see is fair competition between businesses. All right, competition allows a capitalist economy to thrive, and that's what we wanted to see. Fair competition, fair business. Antitrust Act made sure that big companies didn't squash that. Balanced competition. One of the last muckrakers that I'm going to deal with is Jacob Rees. Now, Jacob Rees kind of took this muckraking point of view from a different angle. How he dealt with it is he did a lot of photography. Okay, what he wanted to show, not just talk about, but he wanted to show the conditions of the everyday lower class person. All right, so he took a lot of pictures of poor houses, uh, slums, streets, uh, soup kitchens. We're dealing with the actual day in and day out conditions of the typical lower class American and he wanted to show just how terrible those conditions were because there were a few at the top of the pyramid that were living high. They were living strong, they had all this money, they didn't care about everybody else and Jacob Rees wanted to show that while they had all of that way down at the bottom there are these people who don't have anything and they're working so hard to make that money which ends up going right to the top. So he took pictures of all these different conditions and what we're going to see is we're going to have working standards, we're going to eventually be setting up minimum wages so that the man working in a factory or a power plant or a meat packing plant, they've got to make a certain amount of money so that they can get by, that their daily life isn't overwhelming. And we're also going to see the conditions of the factory themselves improve. We can't have any more fires in factories. We can't have any more children dying while they're working because of machinery. All right, there's going to be safety standards at these factories and people are eventually going to realize that in order for the economy to succeed and for everybody to progress fairly through the progressive era, there needs to be this standard expectation for everyone to get by. All right. A lot of the other big names were dealing with Ida Tarbell, getting with Standard Oil, Ray Stannard Baker did the right to work, all right? and David Graham Phillips wrote The Treason of the Senate. Okay, this is muckraking dealing with policies of the government. Okay, maybe we're going to get into some ideas about the vote, um, direct election. Okay, We have a lot of issues that come to light because of muckrakers. They go, they find the problem, they bring it to light, and eventually when everybody knows about it, it's going to find its way up to the top and if enough complaining happens, people are going to take action and things are going to change. One thing we need to realize, though, is that the great part about muckraking is nowadays it's standard. It's not even a big deal. Muckraking is everyday journalism. You can't go a day without somebody exposing someone or something else going on in the world. Sometimes right in our own city, sometimes our state, sometimes the country. But muckraking is this idea of making sure that we keep an eye out for things going on that are either unfair to others or that we need to finally expose. Um, a good example of what's been going on recently in muckraking, just in the past decade, we had Al Gore. He did An Inconvenient Truth. He's trying to bring to light this theory of uh, global warming. So. What I want you guys to think about is why was muckraking important? What was going on in the United States that led up to the progressive era? Okay? How did muckraking enact in the progressive era? What was the point of the people that were muckraking? 
All right? They were bringing up these issues. We need to think about what was important. Making sure that progress occurred for everybody, not just the people at the top. But we need to make sure that we are bringing people up from the bottom as well. We are raising the standard expectation of living all right, and the quality of life for everybody in the United States of America. So just think about all the different things that still happen today with muckraking. Think about the different reforms that occurred with politics, with the Food and Drug Administration, with the homeless, with the people working in plants, the safety conditions at the plants, and just think about all the different ways that the people who were really fighting for it at the bottom, eventually they had such an effect that it made its way up to the top, and pretty President Teddy Roosevelt himself took action. We're going to have a lot of things happening, and finally the top is getting their hands dirty and taking action, fixing those things that had to do with the muck. I'll catch you guys next time.